In this episode, which forms a part of a series of episodes entitled uh, Language Acquisition Program, we are trying to give natural and realistic situations in which English language is produced. For producing the language correctly, one has to master the syntax of the language in the way in which it is used in common conversation. Secondly, the one who learns a language or acquires a language has to acquire the use of a large number of words or uh, we, what we call vocabulary. Vocabulary expansion is an essential aspect of learning a language. In the episodes that we present, we do not strictly adhere to the principle of restricting the vocabulary, because in natural communication, there need not be any necessity for restriction of vocabulary. So whatever the subject is, what the subject requires, we use and choose as uh, items of vocabulary. And uh, what do we mean by learning a piece of vocabulary? I think uh, there are four aspects to a piece of vocabulary when somebody learns it. If one claims that one knows a word, one should know its sound, correct sound. And correct sound is acquired by imitating faultless models of pronunciation. And in all our episodes, it has been our endeavor to present the sounds in the correct manner in which it is supposed to be said. And the second aspect of acquiring a vocabulary is learning its meaning, the sense. And sense is usually acquired by observing the way in which it is used in a sentence or in a context. And from the context, the one who listens to it is able to guess at the meaning of the word. So the first is sound, the second is spelling, and the third is the way in which it is used in a sentence in order to convey a meaning. And that is called syntax in English. The position of a word in a sentence and the form of the word in a sentence and the way in which it is used uh, form the syntactic aspect of the vocabulary. And finally, the fourth S or the fourth aspect is the spelling which we cannot do much in a presentation like this. Therefore, extension of vocabulary usually means learning the sounds of a uh, word, learning the meaning of the word or sense, sound, sense, 
than syntax and spelling, the four S's as they are called by pedagogues, pedagogic theorists. For listening comprehension, we have included a very humorous story called The Strange Will. We know that men leave wills behind for their families. But what happens when a will is so strange that no one can understand it? Once upon a time, a man died, leaving his wife and three daughters alone. He had been quite wealthy with enough farmland, a huge mansion for a home, and a winery that brewed some of the finest wines in the area. The three daughters inherited the entire fortune. They were of differing temperament though. The eldest was quite a beauty and was always nurturing her good looks and wasting a lot of money on cosmetics. The second was plain looking but good with a needle and clothing. She could spin and darn well and her eye-catching designs were the talk of young girls in town. She also handled the household chores competently. The youngest girl was interested in wines. She was unfortunately quite tipsy most of the time. The three of them did not get along with each other either. Soon after the father's death, the daughters wanted to know what was left for each of them. The will, however, turned out to be rather strange. It had two main clauses. One, that the fortune should be equally divided among the three daughters in such a manner that they would not be able to enjoy any of it. And two, as soon as they ceased to own their share of the property thus inherited, they should pay one lakh rupees each to their mother. Everyone was confused. No one knew how to divide the property in the required manner. In an attempt to honor, her dead husband's wishes, the widow consulted several lawyers, but none of them could fathom the depths of such a will. The months went by. The three daughters did nothing else but bicker over the contents of the will. Tired of these incessant fights and worried that she was not able to do justice to her husband, the widow finally decided to act in her own way. She divided the property, keeping the interests of her daughters in mind. To the eldest, she assigned the servants all the finery of the house and the mansion itself. The second one would get all the land, the herds and the farm equipment. The youngest would have a cellar stocked full of wines and an elegant winery with a beautiful garden. The neighbors thought highly of the mother 
who made a very logical division of the world. The day came when the family gathered to receive their share. Just as the mother was about to read out the contents of the deed, a young man spoke up. Your husband would turn in his grave if he knew that you had misinterpreted his intentions so badly. The widow was aghast. She had been sure that she was about to do what was best for everyone concerned. When asked to explain his statement, the young man said he could solve the riddle of the will. Give the land, its equipment and the flock to the beauty conscious eldest daughter. The hard working country woman should get the winery and the beautiful garden. The third daughter can have the finery and the servants. But that would be useless, protested the mother. Precisely, replied the man. They will not have the strength or the inclination to keep things that are alien to their character. The first daughter will dispose of the land and all the paraphernalia associated with it. The second daughter will hate to be pinned down to a winery and get rid of it to the first bidder. And your third daughter will sell all the finery in order to buy wine. Thus, each person will no longer remain in possession of their inheritance and will be able to give you one lakh rupees each after the sale. The father apparently had judged his daughters well. So had, in fact, the young man whose intelligence surpassed that of lawyers with experience. Describe the three daughters. The eldest was quite a beauty and spent most of her time nurturing her good looks and wasting a lot of money on cosmetics. The second was a plain looking but good with a needle and clothing. She could spin and done and her eye-catching designs were the talk of young girls in town. She also handled the household chores well. The youngest girl was interested in wines. She was unfortunately quite tipsy most of the time. The three of them did not get along with each other. What were the strange clauses in the will? The will had two main clauses that the fortune should be equally divided among the three daughters in such a manner that they would not be able to enjoy any of it and as soon as they ceased to own their share of the property thus inherited, they should pay one lakh rupees each to their mother. What was the family's response to the will? Everyone was confused. No one knew how to divide the property in the required manner. In an attempt to honor her dead husband's wishes, the widow consulted several lawyers, but none of them could fathom the depths of such a will. How did the daughters behave after their father's death? The three daughters did nothing else but bicker over the contents of the will. Each one wanted to get the best share possible and bargained for a good marriage that would make their life secure. How did the widow divide the wealth? She divided the property, keeping the interest of her daughters in mind. To the elders, she assigned the servant all the finery of the house and the mansion itself. The second one would get all the land, the herds and the farm equipments. The youngest would have a cellar stock full of wines and an elegant winery with a beautiful garden. Give the young man's interpretation of the will. The young man said 
he could solve the riddle of the will. He said, the eldest daughter should be given the land, its equipment and the flock, the hard-working country woman, the winery and the beautiful garden, and the third daughter could have the finery, the house and the servants. What was the mother's initial response to such a division? The mother thought that it was a useless division of the property. What was the young man's intention with such a strange suggestion? The man knew that the three daughters would not have the strength or the inclination to keep things that were alien to their character. The first daughter would dispose of the land, the second daughter would hate to be pinned down to a winery and get rid of it to the first bidder, while the third would sell all the finery in order to buy wine. Thus, each person would be able to give the mother one lakh rupees each after the sale. The terms of the will were met successfully. For being exposed to spoken language, dialogues are very important. And in this ep episode, we have included a dialogue between two friends who have not seen each other for a long time. The way in which they make nice pleasantries between themselves is a very interesting dialogue which uh, the learners uh, would certainly enjoy. Lukanu, isn't that Sajitra who was her neighbor some years back? Yes, I think it's Sajitra. Hello, Sajitra. Hi. Haven't seen you for ages. Where have you been? Hello, sisters. I had been doing B.Sc. in Electronics at the Christian College, Chennai. I had to be away from Kerala for three years. You mean to say that you were at Chennai for last three years? Not exactly. I had come to Kerala only twice during the three years and that too on short visits. How is life, Sajitra? Getting on well. By the way, what do you intend to do? Know that you have taken your degree? At present, I am looking for a job in a private company. I will work for two years and then go for MSA. That's nice. You don't want to depend on your parents for your higher studies, I presume. You are right. How are your parents? They are okay. They will be delighted to see you. I shall certainly try to see them soon. Excuse me, I have to go now. Bye. Bye. Once again, we have an informal conversation, this time between three former neighbors. You have already learned the appropriate response to greetings such as how are you and how do you do. In this conversation we have a more Indian version how is life Suchitra and the answer getting on well. How is life Sajitra? Getting on well. Also later Suchitra asks how are your parents? The response is they are okay. How are your parents? They are okay. Note the final leave taking. Excuse me, I have to go now. Bye. Excuse me, I have to go now. Bye. 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 Let's have a rerun of the same conversation. Lukanu, isn't that Sajitra who was her neighbor some years back? Yes, I think it's Sajitra. Hello, Sajitra. Hi. Haven't seen you for ages. Where have you been? Hello sisters, I had been doing B.Sc. in Electronics at the Christian College Chennai. I had to be away from Kerala for three years. You mean to say that you were at Chennai for last three years? Not exactly. I had come to Kerala only twice during the three years and that too on short visits. How is life, Sajitra? Getting on well. By the way, what do you intend to do now that you have taken your degree? At present, I am looking for a job in a private company. I will work for two years and then go for MSA. That's nice. You don't want to depend on your parents for your higher studies, I presume. You are right. How are your parents? They are okay. They will be delighted to see you. I shall certainly try to see them soon. Excuse me, I have to go now. Bye. Bye. A short 
but very instructive discussion of important aspects of usage uh, forms uh, a very significant part of all these episodes. Uh, the use of tenses is very important for learners of English as a second language because in many native Indian languages we do not have correspondent tense forms and therefore English tense may cause some difficulty to speakers of other languages. In this episode, we have tried to explain what the ways of expressing futurity in English are. Futurity in English is expressed through different forms of language. So we have to remember that there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between a form and the meaning of it. Several forms can be used to express futurity. It is said that the English language has no future tense, only future forms. This is because Future tense is indicated by adding will or shall to the other two tense forms. Thus, the four future forms are as follows. Simple future. You obtain the simple future by adding will or shall to the base form of the main verb, as in, I will come with you to the market. Future progressive. This is formed by adding will or shall to be plus main verb plus ing. Example, will you be attending the concert tonight? The future perfect is formed by adding will or shall to have plus past participle of the verb. This sentence, Matthew will have finished eating by now, illustrates this tense form. Future perfect progressive, will or shall plus have plus been plus main verb plus ing. This last future form is rarely used in normal speech and therefore we do not go into the details now. Looking at it from another point of view, we can say that future forms are formed in English basically in five ways. One, what we have already said, adding will and shall. Examples, we shall hear the results of the election within a week. I will see you again on Tuesday by adding be going to to the infinitive as in are you going to put a shirt on? She says she is going to be a doctor when she grows up. Please note that in these sentences the time referred to is in the future though the statement is made in the present. The present progressive. The present progressive may also be used to indicate a future event based on a present plan or arrangement. What are you preparing for lunch? The simple present may also be used to indicate future time in sentences with subordinate clauses, especially adverbial or conditional clauses. I'll get her to phone you if she comes in. The last point in this connection is forming the future using will or shall to the progressive form. This is something we have already 
taken care of. Example, will he be coming by car? The future form, as we have earlier discussed, is formed by adding will or shall to be plus main verb plus ing. Notice the use of future forms in the following sentences. Please understand that each sentence has to do with a different situation. Matthew will play a game of cards with Muhammad. If you drop that bottle, it'll break. We will be moving to a new flat next month. Will you remember to post this letter? In a few days time, we will be going home. When I go home, my dog will be sitting at the door waiting for me. We are really late. All the seats will have been taken by the time we reach the theater. I shall have gone to the movie by then. We will have completed feeding the fish when you come back from the petrol pump. Will you be buying film for your camera? Get me a roll, please. Will you be wearing a new dress tomorrow? This kind of steak will not bite unless you step on it. Watch these sentences once more. Matthew will play a game of cards with Muhammad. If you drop that bottle, it'll break. We will be moving to a new flat next month. Will you remember to post this letter? In a few days time, we will be going home. When I go home, my dog will be sitting at the door waiting for me. We are really late. All the seats will have been taken by the time we reach the theater. I shall have gone to the movie by then. We will have completed feeding the fish when you come back from the petrol pump. Will you be buying film for your camera? Get me a roll, please. Will you be wearing a new dress tomorrow? This kind of steak will not bite unless you step on it. The conversation between neighbors further illustrates the use of future forms. have come to the end of this episode. I hope by looking at this you have learned a number of vocabulary items and how to use those in sentences. You have been exposed to the common way of speech between two friends and also you have been exposed uh, to some points of grammar which will certainly stand you in good stead in using the language uh, independently. Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Good job, Mama,